One of the things that I do in my class as far as a review activity is a little activity called clickers. It's akin to students having their own little clicker where you project a question on the board and they can say A, B, C, or D, but it doesn't actually use any technology. The students don't have any technology in their hands. They have a little piece of paper. So these are what are known as the plickers. Each one is a little different kind of shape and the idea is that if a student wants to say that the answer is A, they're going to hold it up like this with A on the top. If they think the answer is B, they're going to hold it like that, C, and so forth. And the good thing about this is students can't really see what the other people are holding up because these don't look like the actual letter um, and so they're not actually just putting the letter up um, that they see everybody else putting up so you get a little bit more accurate data and you can assign these this is number one you can assign these to students so that way after you scan them you can see all the results that student number one had put all the results that student number two had put and student number three Plickers comes with an app uh, and you can actually you don't have to put the questions in on the app you can just do it on the computer but then you can queue them up for your actual class I like to to start with a simple fun question that students can answer. It says, what do you normally eat for breakfast? When I click on that, it will actually project the question up on the board. And so I can read it and I can tell the students, all right, go ahead and pick the one that you want. I tell the students to hold it up based on uh, the answer that they have. And then when I'm ready to scan, I'll just come back to the app. I'll click the little camera button and it can actually read all of their answers even pretty far away and seeing if it's right or wrong this question doesn't have a right or wrong answer of course souls is probably the the correct answer for what you eat for breakfast but since there's no right or wrong answer it doesn't show up as green or red if i click on stop now I can actually see the data of who answered what. We've got a lot of soul eaters. Um, and what's really cool is if I hit show graph, it'll actually show how many people answered each one of these questions. Um, and everyone can actually see that. And then a lot of times I'll be like, okay, so we've got some people answered A, some people answered D. Who answered D? All right. How are souls in the morning? Oh, they're delicious. Delicious. All right. And so I can uh, actually show the correct answer afterwards, but this one doesn't have a correct answer. I would just go to the next question on the queue, which I can do by just exiting that out of that one. And then we can say, okay, now let's actually do a math problem right here. On my phone, it'll show the correct answer but up here it won't show the correct answer. So even if you guys are unsure, you can go ahead and just take a guess. When I'm ready to scan, I can scan it. Move your fingers, so that way it doesn't cover up. There we go. They don't actually have the names assigned to them. This is just the random ones from my class and these are students that came in to help me during lunch. All right, and so I can hit stop. And then I can see all the different answers right here and how many people got it right and how many people got it wrong. Um, and if I wanna show just the graph, I can click show graph just like I did on the last one. That'll show the graph. We'll have a discussion uh, a lot of times. And then after our discussion, I will click on show the correct answer and then students can actually see if they got it right uh, and it actually shows that right there so I really like that you can control a lot from the app originally I wanted to laminate these because I wanted them to last a little bit longer but then if you laminate them there's kind of a glare when you're trying to scan them with your phone and then making sure students aren't putting their their fingers in front of it um, and if they do change their answer midway it'll just take the most recent answer of what they have and you can also have a list of how many students haven't answered yet what I would say is I don't necessarily necessarily like games and math that kind of test speed um, and so I kind of limit the amount of problems that students have to actually work out if I'm doing this in a math classroom because I do value students actually taking time to think about what they're doing um, and not feeling like they have to rush which still ends up happening sometimes uh, when we do it like this but I like the low tech aspect of it that students aren't distracted by their computers or their phones let me show you how to set up a few of the things on the Plickers website um, um, including creating the questions and then queuing it up and all of that stuff. So when you create your account, uh, the first thing you'll probably want to do is actually print out your little Plickers cards. You can just click on your name after you've created your account and then it says get Plickers cards right there and then you can get large font, expand it, all different types and then get them printed out. I believe you can even maybe get some pre-made ones ordered and then just sent to you. And they take up half a sheet so you can print out however many you need. After you do that, you 
want to set up your class, you can say new class, you can say AP Biology, create a class, and add your students, uh, Jeff, Steve, Karen, Tom. You can put them in there. You don't even have to put the last name. Uh, let's say this is only four kids. Hit next. And then if you want to actually assign them, Jeff number one, Steve number two, Karen number three, Tom number four. Um, that way, if you want to go back and actually look at some of the different, the different ways that they answered in your reports, you can do that. Click on done. Let's say you want to start actually adding your questions. You're going to click on new set where it says it up there. What is biology? And you can say which one is the correct one if there is a correct one. If there is no correct one, it's just gonna be a survey. Um, and so most will probably be graded. And then you can just add a new question. If you wanna include a math question, what I usually do is I'll do the math question on a different website that's easier to do. And then I'll just insert that as an image. If maybe I take a screenshot, you can also set these as true or false. Is biology fun? True. And so after you do that, biology test review, change the name up there. After you do that, you just go on home. You can look at your library. You can see I've got biology test review. You can click on that little arrow. And if you want to add this to any of your classes, click on add to queue and add to AP Biology. Then when you open up Plickers, you will see all of your classes there once you actually sign in and make sure you're using the same username and everything. You click on the class and you can see the questions that you have um, on your queue. So up next is Biology Test Review. Once I'm ready, I need to go back to now playing on the screen and it's basically gonna wait for whatever I'm gonna do on my phone. If I just click on what is biology right there, the question shows up and then I can do the way I showed you in the video prior. So let me know if you plan on trying this and if you have any questions about it. I'll also link to a couple of videos in the description on setting it up as I did this one kind of fast, uh, but hopefully this will be a fun review activity for you and your students. If you'd like to stay in the loop with any upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe. I help teachers do innovative work in the classroom. I'm Tom Gibson. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.